Hello and welcome to Infinity. We've looked at in the luminosity selection macros, the link to the free macros down below. Uh, we looked at the first three here, we're looking at the selectable zones, the parabolic group, and then we can look at the last three down here, which are there to help extend the use of the other ones. So for example, with this picture, if I use the parabolic darks on it, then double click the little white box there, which is a procedural texture, which gives us some controls. And I turn off the layer underneath so we can see what is being selected. This is a selecting part of the picture. And of course, it starts the dark. So I can start from the bottom here and gradually increase. And it gets the darker ones and then stretches it out to more and more. And if I bring up the hard width, then it sort of hardens off from the bottom again. The northern one there, you can just try to tweaking it to see what you like best. And the bottom one will have a very minor effect. But you can pick out, just say some of these things here. So this is what, say, I'm going to select. So now then, the question is, what can I do with these other macros down the bottom here? Well, the first one, mono stretch, is quite easy. If I click on that, what's happened is this has now been reduced to a single pixel layer, which is just those dark areas, but in effectively in mono. And then you can just use that for things, including masking. You can blend it in, for example. If I turn on the bottom layer, you can see there already, if I turn this off and on, it's, you know, it's already accentuating the dark areas. But I can then throw in the blend modes here. And as you come down here, most blend modes will do something interesting. You know, sometimes light lightning, darkening, and so on. And you can see you've got all kinds of options from that just by simply creating that layer and blending that in. Let's go to the history here and just go to just before that mono stretch. So we've now got this again. Because the next one down here, convert to mask and spare channel. If I click on that, what's happened now is it's created a mask, but it's dropped it behind here. But now if I click on the original picture here, I've got a mask here. I can always drag that out in the traditional way and put it onto things. But I've also got down, if I go to the channels, here yeah, a spare channel down here, which has got that mask stored in it as well. So for example, if I go here and say, go to adjustments, I could do curves, but let's say we'll do a, um, where's the recolor? There it is up there. Uh, that looks pretty, you know, not very helpful by itself. But if I can drop that mask on, I chose down here. So I go to the spare channel, right click on that and say load to recolor adjustment alpha. It's immediately had an effect on this. And you can turn on the this recolor on and off. You can see that there is an effect there, but now it's just coloring in those darks. And being shadows more, maybe I do this a cooler color, a blue or something, but you can see all the way across here, it's extremely usable. And you've not even put in blend modes, you could put blend modes in on top of that again. So that's another very useful thing that you can do. And let's go back to just before we uh, did that, which I think was up here. Yeah, there we go. So you got that layer there. The, the, the third thing you can do is the same as this mask and spare channel, but it simply drops a selection on top because sometimes it's just easier. So if I click on that, you can see I've got a selection now. Now if I add an adjustment or filter to it, it will automatically pick up that selection and constrain what I do to that. So yeah, look on, let's just do a curves here. And once I've done that, I've got the mask is, is being picked up already by the curves there. So I can hit Control D to get rid of the selection lines so I can see what I'm doing. And now when I adjust this, it's just adjusting those selected dark areas. I don't always use these. I often you know, stick with the layer itself. So because I can do a lot of this if I went back to where I was back here by adding things into here it's because it's just got this bit selected. So I could say go in and do that curves adjustment there. And the good thing about this is because I've still got the select darks out here, 
I can go back to this and I can change that after I've put in the curves so I can adjust what is being adjusted there with those curves. So it gives you a bit more flexibility, but you can still keep the effectively the live dynamic one for standard use. That's it, and I hope that was useful, and thank you very much for watching.